The Yankees will play their first game of the year tomorrow in Houston against the Astros. It'll be CC Sabathia against Scott Feldman. And in Houston at Minute Maid Park is our good buddy from the New York Post. That is Joel Sherman. Joel, Michael, and Don here. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How about yourself? All is well on this end. Uh, before we even start with what's going on there now, Joel, what's your take on this Yankee team? How good do you think they could be? How many wins do you think they'll have? Uh, funny, Mike. Uh, I'll ask everybody to go ahead to nypost.com or buy the paper tomorrow. I kind of wrote about this a little for tomorrow's paper, which is I'm still not at peace with what the 85 wins last year meant. So it's really hard for me to say what this is about. With the 85 wins last year in fourth place or so tied for third place, the beginning of the end, that they're not going to be very good anymore? Or was it a sign that their culture is so good that even when everything went wrong, they still figured out how to stay in the race and win 85 games until about the last, what, three or four days of the season when they were eliminated? And now if you reinforce pretty much all around, they'll just go back to being the 90 to 98 win Yankees again. And I'm still not completely at peace with it, but I will say this. If you were scripting spring training, it would look something like the Yankee spring training look, particularly their starting pitching, which one to five, and even if you think about it, they're six, seven, eight guys, Nuno, Phelps, Warren, they all pitched very well. And in a division where you have some strong offenses like Boston, Baltimore, and you've got to be able to match up and pitch against Tampa Bay, you better have a good rotation. Of the injured players coming back, Derek Jeter, who played just 17 games last year, and Mark Teixeira coming back from the wrist, which one would you be the most confident in getting back to their old ways from before the injury? You know, I, I'm one of these guys, Don, who I, until I really see it, I have a high level of skepticism about both. Uh, you know, Teixeira is a mid-30 player who was declining already, who had a tremendously impactful injury for a hitter, which is a wrist. And Jeter, while one of the you know elite players in the history of the game, does turn 40 in June. The ankle fractured twice. He was a range challenge player before the injury. Uh, you know, like, like I, I would think that for both players, the Yankees would take very you know good to very good seasons. Where do they sign up for that and get out of Dodge? Were you surprised, Joe? I was a little surprised that they went with Solarte rather than Eduardo Nunez. What do you think's behind that? Is it just that Solarte couldn't be sent down and had a great spring? Well, I think that when it comes to positions like that where the track records are short, as misleading as spring training can be, you have to let the competition play out. And the competition wasn't really close. Solarte was much better than Nunez in spring. Uh, I think he brings something to the bench uh, as a switch hitter. Uh, I think one of the key elements, very subtle there, is, look, Brian Roberts has been one of the most injured players in the sport over the last four or five years. And so you want to have, you know, you feel like you have in Dean Anna or Brendan Ryan when he comes back, some insurance for Jeter. You want to make sure you take somebody who can play second base well. And they didn't really think it was close between Solarte and Nunez, who was the better defender at second base. And so uh, I think you have this situation. I will say this is I have been a Nunez guy for a while because I, I just love athleticism, and I love guys who, you know, with, with fast bat path. And, uh, you know, he has both quick legs, quick bat, and I just thought at some point it would catch up. And he's been given several opportunities now over the last two years to win jobs. And so far he has not been able to. I think he's 26. He turned 27 during the season. You feel that clock ticking, and maybe it's already expired on his chance to ever at least play with the Yankees regularly. You know what? Then they misread their guy, Joel, because let's be honest. From what I remember, if they would include uh, Nunez in the deal, they might have won two World Series in a row if they got Cliff Lee. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, I'm sure probably we can go and talk to 30 GMs about the ones they didn't do or got close to doing. Uh, I, I know you probably know this, Mike, because I've written about it several times. Just quite frankly, the other player they asked for was Nova. If they put Nova or Nunez in after David Adams got hurt, and my feeling always was you're the Yankees, you're playing for championships, you can find another Nova, you can find another Nunez. What you can't find is another Cliff Lee. So I guess you have to close your eyes today. Uh, a couple of years later, I, get a, I guess he got beat up on opening day here. So I would have gone ahead and made that trade. But I have a feeling that uh, – there's a lot of trades that are very, very close that never happen. When you look at the amount of money they spent, Joel, in free agency, I mean, it was a mint. 
and we're still wondering how good this team is going to be. So does that make a statement about how much work they had to do, or does that make more of a statement on that free agency isn't the way to build a team like it used to be? I think the answer to that is both, Don, just to make a full circle to what I said before, which was, you know, I'm trying to come to peace with what 85 wins meant last year. And one of the things it clearly meant is the group they had and waiting for their farm system wasn't going to work if they wanted to keep winning now. You know, there was ways to think under the $189 million, but in quite frankly what I think is by far the best division in the sport. Uh, I, I would think that the Yankees, Orioles, Rays, and uh, Red Sox are four of the eight or nine best teams in baseball as the season begins. You know, you were either going to reload or not. And while the total number in investment, which was about a half a billion dollars, $500 million, was significant, the reality is they actually took their payroll down this year. It's down from about 235 to 211 which is a drop of about 10%. And so, you know, they, look, they're the Yankees. Even if it was at 235, you would imagine that they would have room to address situations as it went along. And five minutes ago, Brian Cashman addressed a couple of us in the media, and one of the things he was asked, for example, about, like, are you comfortable with the infield? And he said, well, you know, I'm never comfortable, and part of what I'll do all year is can I find reinforcements when it's necessary? And I would say the Yankees are one of those you know, 10 or 12 go teams, they're not going to let a huge hole sit in the middle of the field. And if they need something, they'll go try to get it. Uh, one, I, I talked about this at the start of the show, Joel. I, I thought your column today, sitting down with, you know, Hal Steinmer for 45 minutes, one thing that jumped out is that one quote that, that Joe Girardi gave him about the, the players that were called up last year. And it almost seems like um, Hal almost said to you, everybody is on notice. that it, this, this farm system has to change. Your heads are going to roll. Uh, quite frankly, Mike, I'm shocked that heads didn't roll after last season because, I mean, Joe Girardi just spoke reality. Whatever he might have said publicly to guys like you and me about who was being brought up last year, it was not just that they were bad play, you know, like like failing players, but they tactically did not play well. Uh, again, I just don't know how the Yankees won 85 games last year with so much of that on the team. And I thought uh, that there would be some changes and uh, significant changes in firing. But instead, he decided to keep the structure in place and make some significant hires. Some were in scouting, uh, but the main ones were in player development, where they hired a bunch of senior guys who are going to do very specific things, like Jody Reed work with the infield, Mike Quaddy work with the outfielders. And what they're hoping for is... A, a better group, uh, you know, better tactical play, but also a seamlessness that, you know, what's taught at A is being taught at AA, which is being taught at AAA, which is, and once you could do it, I I would use the Cardinals as the example. When a St. Louis Cardinal gets called up to the major leagues, they can play for the St. Louis Cardinals. I think the Yankees would like to at least get to the point when they bring a guy up, the guy can play for the New York Yankees. It's the best division of baseball, Joel. Who do you have as the team winning that division? You know, I... Don, I picked the Rays and then the Red Sox and the Yankees and the Orioles. But if you told me it finished Orioles, Yankees, Mm -hmm. uh, Red Sox, Rays, I would buy it. I think if the season were played 100 times, each of those teams would win a fair amount of times and each of them would finish fourth. I think clearly, again, the script in spring training was perfect for the Yankees. If that's the script during the season, if if their five starters pitch well, as well as they, if that was a coming attraction to the season and all five of those guys stay healthy and they pitch well, they get 130, 140 starts out of those five guys. I would think they're going to win the division uh, because those guys pitch so well in spring training. And so to me, again, the question is, was that a coming attraction? Was it just the aberration that often occurs in spring? Uh, but considering where they were on this date last year and what had occurred to them in February and March as far as devastating injuries, I'm sure they'll sign up to be where they are right now. Joel, I know you're a little down, but I will be in Houston shortly, so you don't have to feel badly. I'll be there for you, okay? That's all it takes? That's it. I might, should I wait with the limo running at the airport or not? That would be great. I'll be getting it about midnight. I'll be the guy smiling. Thank Aww. you, Joel. <laughs> be good.